In September 2018, a farmer in the small village of Hutkov, Poland, approached his neighbor, a sweet older woman who was out working in her garden, to discuss the foul odor coming from her barn, and he offered to search it for her. What they found would transform a missing person case into one of the most mysterious disappearances in history. A lot of the names in this episode are of Polish origin, so I apologize in advance for any mispronunciation. There are few times in life more exciting than the birth of your first child. Mateusz Kowalski thought so too, which is exactly why he decided to take some time off his job as a construction worker in Hanover, Germany, to drive to his fiancée's house in Libyagora in the northwest corner of Poland. Mateusz was raised in Hutkov, way down in the southeast corner of Poland, where his mother still lived, but as a young man had followed both his father and his sister to Hanover, Germany, to find work. And even though the distance was tough, he and his fiance had managed to maintain their relationship well enough that they were now expecting a child. They were expecting their daughter basically any day, and Mateusz wanted to be there to welcome his child into the world. So around 11.30 p.m. on the night of March 28, 2018, Mateusz got into his navy blue 1998 BMW 525 and got on the road to Lipiagora. Now the route he was taking was just over 400 miles and should have taken him just over seven hours to get there, maybe eight with a stop or two included. So that should have put him at his destination by early morning on March 29th. At 10.22 a.m. the next morning, Mateusz's dad called him to make sure he had gotten to where he was going okay. Mateusz told his dad that a truck accident had led to a traffic jam that held him up. But no worries. He was already across the Polish border in Szczecin, so he only had about two hours left before he would be in Lipiagora. At that point, Mateusz also texted his fiance to let her know, as well. So when it rolled around to 5 p.m. and he still hadn't arrived and hadn't reached out in any way, his fiance called Mateusz's sister Katarzyna in Hanover and says, have you guys heard from him? Katarzyna says, we haven't heard anything either, but let's give him a few more hours. Maybe he just broke down on the highway or something. When 10 p.m. comes and goes with no word from Mateusz, his mother calls the police. But the police tell her, it hasn't even been a day yet. Wait a few more days. He'll probably turn up. So they wait a few more days. But then they contact both the German and Polish police. The German police say that since Mateusz said he was already over the border into Poland, it's not their jurisdiction. And the Polish police say, well, not much. And the family knows that Mateusz's cell was working for at least a few days after he went missing. So they asked the Polish police to get the GPS data and find his phone. But apparently his phone had a German SIM card. So any phone data had to come from the German police. But the German police weren't investigating the case because it was a Polish case. The one thing that the Polish police did tell them is that the phone never connected to a Polish tower. So since that's about the extent of the help they can get from the police, the Kovesky family says, screw you, and start their own investigation. They take it upon themselves to stop at gas stations, rest stops, side streets, all along Mateusz's route to question people and hand out flyers. Now, the German-Polish border near Szczecin is not a manned checkpoint, but it does have cameras with license plate readers. The Kaveskis obtain surveillance footage from the border crossing, but do not see Mateusz anywhere. They also take their case to the media, talking to anyone and everyone who will listen. Unfortunately, their efforts turn up nothing. Mateusz and his car have simply vanished. Six months go by and no one has seen a thing. Mateusz's mom is out working in the garden one day when her neighbor stops by to ask about the smell coming from her barn. It's been there since at least July and the neighbor thought it was just some animal that had crawled in and died, but it just kept getting worse. Mrs. Kaveski said she looked for the source of the stink as well, but could never find anything. But the two of them head inside together to have yet another look. The barn is used on a regular basis, especially since it's been summer, but there is a wall in the middle to divide the space, which creates a loft area over part of it. 
you can see up there, but you can't really see anything that might be laying on the ground of the loft. The neighbor goes up the stairs just to be thorough and finds what looks like a pile of clothes lying on the hay. But it's not a pile of clothes. It's actually a dead human body, a severed head and a torso. There are also two nooses hanging from the rafters and a backpack on the floor. Although the remains are too decomposed to be ID'd on the spot, the backpack contains, among other things, Mateusz's cell phone. And later, DNA testing would confirm that this is indeed Mateusz Kaweski. Keep in mind that in March, Mateusz wasn't headed for his family's home in the southeast of Poland. He was headed to his fiance's in the northwest. It's a 400 mile trip between the two basically from one side of the country to the other. And his home village was about as far away from Germany as you can get in Poland. But back to the barn. The police are, of course, called, who come out to investigate. They take the remains and bag up the clothing and then pretty much leave. Another family member asks the police, is that it? Aren't you going to go through everything and make sure that there isn't something you might be missing? And she is told by the investigators to sift through all of that hay would take us two weeks. We don't have time to do that, but you can feel free if you want to. Only a couple of days later, the police returned all of the items they had taken from the barn. No testing had been done. The police and coroner agreed that the presence of two nooses hanging from the rafters was all the evidence they needed to classify the death as a suicide. They reasoned that as the body hung there and decomposed, the strain on the neck eventually caused the head to become detached from the rest of the body. But the family's not buying it. They went back up into the loft to see if there's anything there that might give them any ideas as to why and how Mateusz got to his family's farm instead of to his fiance's. Mateusz's dad found a shoe. Inside the shoe was a sock and inside the sock was a foot. And his aunt found several of Mateusz's teeth. Interestingly, the coroner's report never mentioned the fact that he was not only missing a foot, but his fingers and palms as well. And the family also takes a closer look at the items returned to them that had been in the barn. The clothing had teeth stuck to them with what looked like blood. And the backpack contained not only his cell phone, but also his wallet, a Polish water bottle full of cigarette butts, a box of orange juice, and public transportation tickets. At that point, two things immediately stick out to the family. One, Mateusz hated orange juice. And two, the teeth. Mateusz's sister, Katarzyna, actually checked with a dentist who confirmed that teeth don't fall out because of decomposition. Teeth don't even usually fall out if a body falls a few feet to the ground, maybe one or two, but they found several of them. This sad state of affairs is pretty much where the case ended. Ruled a suicide and closed in 2019. Except it wasn't. Unbeknownst to the family, who'd been raising holy hell about the terrible job the Polish police had done in investigating and accusing them of negligence, the Polish Prosecution Service, which is the Polish equivalent of the district attorney's office here in America, had opened their own investigation, not only into the case, but internally as well. And they determined that while the prosecutors found the investigating officer's actions did not meet the standard for criminal negligence, an internal police investigation did find wrongdoing and two officers were reprimanded. As far as Mateusz's case, prosecutors actually started working with German officials and obtained more evidence, including DNA analysis, expert reports, and an analysis of Mateusz's phone. His personal belongings were analyzed as well, and no other DNA was found on the items. German police got security camera footage from local shops and around his neighborhood and searched Mateusz's apartment in Hanover. 
All of the evidence was then sent to Warsaw for analysis. And what the Polish Prosecution Service learned would completely upend everything anyone had known to that point. Based on all the new evidence, here is what actually happened that day. Mateusz lied. He was not in Chechen when he talked to his dad and texted his fiance. And he also wasn't driving at the time. He was still in Germany. And according to receipts found in his apartment, he was still in his apartment. He eventually took a train to Frankfurt on der Oder, which is a German town right on the border to Poland, and then probably walked across the bridge over the border to the Polish town of Slubica. And that was most likely on March 30th, a full day after telling his family he was already in Poland. Even more crazy is that he then checked into a hotel in Slubica with another person. We're not sure as to whether this person has been identified or not, but if the police know, they're not talking. The next day, Mateusz then jumps on a train to Warsaw and then hops on a bus to Zamich. That pulls into town about midnight. And that is as close as he can get to his village of Hudkov using public transportation. But he is still 13 miles away from Hudkov, and we have no idea how or when he actually got there or how or when he actually died. The police and prosecutors concluded that the evidence absolutely points to a pre-planned suicide with no evidence of any criminal wrongdoing. Unfortunately, the exact pieces of evidence which led the police and prosecutors to this conclusion weren't released to the public. So there are a couple of theories as to what actually went down here. One is that he got into trouble with some bad people. Maybe the meeting at the hotel goes bad and not seeing any other way out of the situation, Mateusz decides to go out on his own terms. Two is that he was having an affair. His lover gets pissed when she finds out that Mateusz is heading home to his fiance and new baby and demands that he meet with her. Thus, the meeting at the hotel. An argument ensues. She threatens to expose the affair. And again, Mateusz sees no other way out but to kill himself. And third, and probably most likely, is that Mateusz got a really big reality check in the face as he's getting ready to hit the road. Parenthood is a big deal, and some people don't react well to the inevitable come-to-Jesus moment that he's actually going to be a father. Maybe the reality was a little too scary, and he decided that he was not up for the job. So he sells his car, goes on a bender, including a quick hookup in Slubica, before heading home to put an end to his shame. Maybe. But notice that all of these options end the same way, with his suicide. That might be a nice little package with a neat little bow. But the facts are just a little messier than that. Number one, Mateusz has no record of being in trouble with the law. That makes theory one, that he got into trouble with the bad guys, highly unlikely. Number two, the orange juice in his backpack. Why would he have that? Several members of his family told police that Mateusz hated orange juice. So the box definitely didn't belong to him. So who? Who was with him those last couple of days? Number three, his phone. Examination of his phone by police discovered Mateusz actually tried to place a call to his uncle on March 30th, but the call was less than a second long and never even had time to go through to his uncle's phone. Was this call an accident or was he trying to reach out for help? Number four, who is the person who was with him as he checks into the hotel in Slubica? And why do we know absolutely nothing about this person? Can they really close the case without locating and talking to this person? Number five, what happened to his car? Neither German nor Polish police were able to find any records of the car being transferred to a new owner or deregistered, which would have to happen before it could be scrapped. To this day, neither the car nor Mateusz's car keys have ever been found. Number six, why was there no toxicology report done on Mateusz's remains? Might have been some important information. Number seven, the police claim there was no foreign DNA found on either Mateusz's body or personal effects. Really? The man spends a day on a public train. Then the night 
at a hotel, then another day on another public train, and then ends with a bus ride. Then the police do a crappy job of collecting evidence, which they give back to the family before collecting it again for further testing. How is there not foreign DNA all over the place? Number eight, the condition of the body. Now, as I mentioned before, it is possible that the stress on the neck of a hanging, decomposing body could become enough to detach the head from the torso. And theoretically, the same thing could happen to a foot as the blood pools in the legs and creates extra outward pressure. But what about the teeth? Dental experts are of the opinion that they didn't fall out or get knocked out on their own. And the missing fingers and palms? I don't even know where to go with that one. And number nine, what I think is the biggest elephant in the room, the unnoticed hanging body. Mrs. Kavesky's neighbor says the bad smell started wafting through his windows around July, but the family was in and out of that barn quite a bit through the summer. The loft area floor where the body was laying couldn't be seen from below, but the rafters where the nooses were sure could. How could a body be hanging there for months and no one notices? Seriously? In my opinion, that's a lot of things hanging out of that neat little box. Just saying. So what are we left with? Well, unfortunately, unless there's some major break in the case in the future, not much. Just tragedy. A family without a son and brother, a fiance without a husband, and a little girl who will never know her father. Oh.